All right. Match one, and we have a pretty solid keepable hand here. We want to keep hitting our land drops, so we do have a one and two, even if they're unexciting. No three, unfortunately, but we might get there. And getting to four and Pirates Prizing puts us in it to win it. Especially because that likely hits our land so we can get the Dreadmaw down on five, which is super sweet. So opponents on blue, so Pirates or Merfolk, it looks like Pirates. They pass on two. Ooh, this is actually a great three to draw. It's it's not at its most exciting at turn three, of course. But it's still a three mana three three. And it's good to just get it down. Get our keeper to the field here. And now we, we have just a solid curve out if we draw a land soon. Siren Lookout, a card I've been very impressed by because flying is incredibly annoying. And it's a 2-3 flyer, which does a good job of holding the team back. Not anymore, because I think I do want to play the Archer here just to stop the... That's the damage on the <clears throat> backswing. And here we will do the fight. Because that frees us up to attack with the keeper. Because I'm fine trading my unexciting two mana play for their pretty good flyer. I did not expect them to be willing to take that up. And now they probably have to point some burn at the archer, because the archer can be very frustrating to um to the beat you with flyers plan. I very much want to hit that land to pirate's prize. Get the dread one down as soon as possible. So we'll know if they have a trick or a, a burn spell if they choose to attack here. Because they, if they leave this back as a blocker, they save themselves three damage, depending on what they're playing second main. So it's kind of likely that they have something, but I think I want to see what it is. Fire Cannon Blast. Yeah, so I think blocking there is the right play, because if it was Fire Cannon Blast, and it was... Then we take the two, and we still have our creature raided to death. So, not the worst if we're gonna lose to burn spell anyway. So now we can opt to try and get that land, and then still play Shapers of Nature for turn, which I think is just fine and kind of what I want to do because I would very much like to cast this soon. So let's scry. I'm putting basically anything that's not a land. <laughs> Opt-in response. It's pretty fun. It is a, it's a fun card. Okay. So that's definitely going to the bottom. And then we still did not hit our, our land to, to get the shapers down. So that's sort of the downside of taking that line. Is that the, the fail state is real on it. Okay, so now I have to see they are, they're at five, what the five drop is. Could be pretty bad for us. Yep. Well, it ended up being just fine, even though we're pinched on land, which is frustrating, because this will still let us attack with our meager army and getting the 4-4 flyer locked down for a while is is still pretty valuable hopefully enough time for us to draw out of mana screw our 
our opponent's still not at the point where they even feel that their life total is being pressured, which is the problem. Second Siren Lookout. So this deck might even be packing uh, a copy of Favorable Winds. People have realized pretty quickly how annoying flying is to deal with in this format. So I'm probably bringing in both of the Destroy Target Flyer spells. It could just be this draw from the opponent, of course, but even so, I think there's some value in bringing that in. Okay, so we did finally hit our land. There's an argument to be made for Tempest Caller, potentially. Tap that. We get in for five. We put him to six. I still think it's better to just try and draw out of this. So next turn we get a Colossal Dreadmaw, and then Colossal Dreadmaw into Tempest Caller is pretty real. We take eight. They do have us on a two-turn clock, though. Yeah, so that, that line gets worse when we think about the fact that they have a two-turn clock, but maybe they're worried about getting killed and they leave up their own blockers. No such luck. So they've kept up something. But yeah, it actually just looks like there's no way out of it. Yep. We gotta scoop it up. We have nothing to deal with it. Uh, that we can check up to Mana Screw, which is unfortunate. Great early curve out, and then we were stuck at three forever, even with the opt. It's pretty easy to take out a kind of low impact card for a crushing canopy. And then what do we make room for with the second crushing canopy? Maybe take out a Depths of Desire. Now let's take out a Headwater Sentries, leaving the depths. Because our creatures that are just trying to block are not that good, since the the Flyers are the name of the game. This is good. Run the ground, I think, is fine. Tempest Color is win. Yeah, let's try this. The only downside to Crushing Canopy is maybe they never draw their Flyers now, but Flyers are enough of a, of a pain. So I'm actually going to keep this pretty terrible hand has the opposite problem of our last hand. But Shapers of Nature being able to do so much and getting it down on turn three could be enough to close out this game, but we'll have to wait and see. I think that's a fine draw. Again, another way to get our Dread Mod down on turn five. Kalanali's Knight. Entrancing Melody is another sweet draw. If they drop a, a mountain, I think we block. Okay, so now it can't be Fire Cannon Blast. Siren Lookout. Drew them a card this time, so the clock is a little bit better off. So we'd, we'd still block in this case. So we have a couple of options available to us. It might have been better to attack without playing the land to entice the opponent into a double. Because here they're, they're worried about this, and we could have blown them out with with Depths of Desire.
I think it's fine to pirate's prize here. Another shapers is sweet. So now we take three. But we get to uh, deploy an early Dreadmaw. An opponent is passing with quite a bit of mana. I think I'm just worried enough about the um, Dreadmaw getting countered that I'd rather play out the second Shapers and leave up Depths of Desire and then wait till they tap out to deploy the Dreadmaw. And we also have Entrancing Melody, so we have some good stuff to deploy. And we get to see what they held up. Uh, that's as fine a draw next turn as it was when we drew it so no big hit to our to our tempo well actually hit to our tempo but no big hit to our game plan fire shrine keeper coming down I'm not sure that we fire off the, the depths. I'm still going to play conservative with this Dreadmaw. I'm just a little worried about... It's even worse to have that card bounced. So they can only get in for two this time. So now we'll just go to bounces so we can get in for a big attack. It's pretty good to have it as insurance, but maybe this prompts them to fire something off. You're going to blink the, the knight. That's pretty okay. Thinking about blocking, they decide against it. So we have a shields down moment here. But it doesn't look like they can hit us back for too, too much, and the Dreadmaw is a big deal. They've got their air elemental. We've got the mana to take the air elemental, which is really bad for our opponent. Ooh, I don't even want to take it. I think I just like destroying it. Yep, and they have had enough. 
Awesome. So yeah, even if just to hit Air Elemental, Crushing Canopy is a fine include. That went much better for us. Let's try it again. We're a little fat on threes. With all the Crushing Canopies in. Maybe this Stormfleet Spy goes. I, I like it though. I like digging through the library. Okay, well, let's see if we can outvalue our opponent. I feel good about this hand. It's slow, but it has some big swingy effects. We need another island. Not another forest. Hopefully we'll get the other island that we need in a reasonable span of time. That's really all we can hope for here. A, a two off the top was fine as well to start to actually do something on turn two and to provide some pressure. So that was fine as well. If they play the Siren's Lookout here, I think we just crush and canopy it if, if it's a two three. Realistically though, they still can't block the, uh, so they have another one. So maybe we just water trap Weaver it for now. And then hope to get our air elemental down sooner. Oh, these... These freaking forests. So they really can't block the Deep Root Warrior anyway. So this is kind of annoying in that it... It doesn't do much. But it saves us a little bit of damage. So we're really looking for island off the top. It's the most important draw that we can get. Our opponents also looks color screwed, but their red's not the most exciting in their deck, and they're they're going to be digging through their deck anyway with the lookouts. So that's kind of nice because we know how to play around that. Oh, and they they kind of have the same thought there, where like. If someone knows about it, it's way less good. We seem to have gotten there, folks. Tempest Caller is, of course, better a little bit later, but we'll get it down, get in for four, get our air elemental down, and we win the skies, which are important to win. And hopefully we stop drawing lands. There's their red. Lightning rig crew. That's good against our small guys. Oh, yeah. Now we have a clear as day target for the crushing canopy. I think I just want to fire this off this turn since it's the two for one. And then get the air elementals down. A little bit later down the road. We have pounce up for whatever that's worth. It's not worth much. Fireshine Creeper comes down. <laughs> Keeper, not Creeper. All right, and we see the rest of their hand. Pirate's Cutlass. So that's frustrating, because that makes our uh, our Air Elemental have to trade with the, the Siren Lookouts. No attacks.
Now attacks is pretty interesting. It makes me want to wait a turn. So I can air elemental plus pounce the 2-3 siren. That way we don't have to deal with two huge flyers over the course of the game. Yeah, it seems like an odd play, because the Aramental is so good. But I think I like being able to get that instant value, unless they got the Blink spell. So that's the, the potential blowout, is they got the Blink spell. Alright. Decisions, decisions. The Dreadmaw can immediately attack. So why don't we play that out? And see how they... How they answer that. Because we still have Air Elemental... Uh, Counts for next turn, but let's just see how they block. Pounce can also throw throw combat for our opponent. Do they go to line up the double block? And then we can pounce our Tempest Caller against their Siren Lookout and see if they have, if they drew into the, the bounce or something. So they're going to spell swindle it. Sure. Way better than our air elemental getting hit by that. And they still have a 4 4 flyer, and they answered our 6 6. And they have a bunch of treasure. So we will see how this goes. This is not the worst draw in the world. It's close. They can eat our deep root if they want, but they have to take a hit. So that's the line they go with. That makes enough sense. We could do a double block, but it will probably prompt our opponent to Fire Shrine Keeper for some value. So that's kind of what we want to not see. Let's see if our opponent wants to eat our guys or um, blast them with the Fire Shrine Keeper here. And if they want to finally make the trade, I feel like, yes, he's going to block and, and then blow him up. I think that makes sense.
and then our opponent's the one with the clock, and we don't have a clock anymore. So they might have gotten there. They might have outvalued us. It's all up to the top of the deck now. So, huh. It looks like they misclicked somehow. Uh, which could be problematic for them. Seven lands left in our deck. We're going to be taking five a turn. So we're on a three turn clock. We really need to draw something. There are good draws available to us. Another creature means we get to... Yeah, so our opponent misread what the card did. So that's an advantage. So this is just... Ugh, unfortunate. Our opponent has to have a counter spell. Which they do not. And now we have to play another creature to change ownership of the Cutlass. That was a good enough top deck that it it might have won us the game even if they had played their card right and killed our both of our guys. That's also a pretty good top deck for our opponent. If they can find a way to... Um, So there's no there's no way to win unfortunately with this but we've got to kind of hope our opponent uh doesn't hit a way to just kill us cuz now they they can beat us with burn oh menace as long as you control another pirate that's brutal so now we don't even have a two turn clock And our opponent does. So this is in very interesting stuff. If our opponent doesn't hit anything, we have him on the on the crackback though. So this is gonna be pretty exciting. Lightning rig crew. Pretty good. It's probably enough to get there for our opponent. This ended up being a very fun, very interesting game. So this puts us where run aground still wins. And it's an island. So it doesn't really look like we have a way to win. Because we can't activate that ability as many times as we need. But we'll swing for the fences. If this Excelis Diviner had not drawn the land, we would have been golden. So the out, I think, is... Draw the card, see if it's run aground, which survives us a turn. 
and now even if it is a bounce spell we can't play it yeah bad beats folks that one's brutal because it was really super close and um, I thought the the creature I attacked with just had menace if I hadn't made that attack we would have won so that is a bad one Oh, I missed my opponent. My opponent probably said uh, something about the match there at the end, too. But, yep, early in the set, bad beats. So it was menace for my opponent, but I had to had to examine the card a little more closely. Well, fun matchup, and our sideboard plan worked. And our deck had requisite value to keep pace with a pretty obnoxious flyers deck.